all the videos that are that are live, I edit them and after we're done. Uh, so they'll be unavailable for a couple of days while I edit them out. Um, so if you guys don't want to watch the edited videos, you want to watch the raw videos without ads and without any editing done to them at all, uh, just join the YouTube channel. I can't join you. You have to join yourself. You have to go to YouTube and pay them. You're not paying me. So don't try to access the membership on YouTube through my PayPal or Patreon because I have no power over that. Go straight to YouTube and when you click the join button, they'll take you through some loops that you've got to follow. Uh, but then you have access to all my teaching videos like like the moment they're free or the mo moment they're available you have full access to everything it's like five bucks a month um if you don't mind waiting wait because the i think the final quality is a better quality anyway so welcome to the knock talk I'm your host, William Hall, broadcasting live out of Kingsland, Texas, USA, with another episode of TNT, The Twisted New Testament, with Rabbi Stewart, the man federal from the Big H, Houston, Texas. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah. How are you, Diane? <laughs> <laughs> welcome back. Hey, I'm fine. How are you doing? It was good seeing you last week. Well, I say welcome back to my back. Uh, it's it, it's offered a little bit of a uh, little bit of relief right now because I've got I've literally uh -huh. have put on a roll on. Icy hot roll on, and then a little bit later, William, put on a patch I, across I, my I back. I had surgery on my back. I know mm. exactly how it feels. It is the worst. Mm. Wow. It's like really debilitating, is, if I use it the right It really word. is. Very good. Welcome, everybody. Okay, so tonight's topic really has to do with the thought process of, you know, Paul, anybody who teaches the law, uh, who claims to be a teacher of the law or rabbi, whatever you call it, um, should support. And, and really promote everything in it. And we all know that the law teaches us, um, the Tanakh teaches us that, you know, the Messiah has to come from a genealogy. If you're king, you got to come from a genealogy. And so for, in and, and 1 Timothy, uh, you say it was chapter 1 or chapter 2? I can't remember. 1. Okay, 1-4. One and 1 Timothy 1-4, one why, why is it that uh, Paul, being a teacher of the law, uh, supposedly, mm -hmm. Uh, why would he say, pay no attention to endless genealogies? Man, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Yeah, and it's like, uh, I mean, how, how how shady can you get? And, I mean, the the answer obviously is very obvious, is that he, uh, what am I doing here? I'm trying to fix my, my shit. It's really dark in my video. Sorry about that. I'm trying to multitask. Um, it's very obvious he was trying to hide um, and cover up for the fact that Jesus doesn't have the right genealogy. Um, to be who they claim him to be. So he's saying, like you said, Rabbi, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, right? Right. So uh, that's, that's kind of the leading topic. What, what other reason would there be? It's First Timothy chapter 1, verse 4. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies with min which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. Hmm. What, what is, why would anybody who's trying to teach someone say, don't look at that? Just what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to look at that. It's like, hey, don't think of pink. I I, got, <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. Oh, wow, that's good. Cool. I said, what did I, I said, uh, oh. um, I apologize. Oh, oh, that's what I was going to say. I, I, what I was going to say was, it's the same kind of thing that they do when they say, oh, the Jews have this hidden passage that nobody's allowed to read. Oh, like as if. That was Isaiah, like Isaiah 53, 53 yeah, because 53, as yeah. soon as a rabbi tells a congregation, you're not allowed to read this, what's the first thing they're going to go do? Oh, that's that's true. That's true. They're going to go read it. The same thing with, you know, Paul telling the people, don't 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 pay attention to genealogies. What's the first thing they're going to do? Right, right. That's if like, they have a brain to think Yeah, that's themselves. like I said, don't think of hot dogs right now. Yeah. Okay, so I have to make a comment on chat. Uh, somebody somebody said well we're while well, I was watching the chat and it says uh, Paul Real said Eminem William and I'm like Eminem what is Eminem and then someone else said Eminem and I'm like what is Eminem and then I looked There's at the a way candy it was about this no thing. I looked at the way it was spelled and I was like, Eminem oh that's like a that's like a rap rapper or something and I realized the phone that I have is my son's old phone. And uh, I don't know how to change the ringtone. <laughs> oh, that's that is hysterical. That's great. That's that I is hilarious. It. You're gonna have to get a kid to tell uh, you how to do your phone. <laughs> that's funny. That's great. Okay, cool. All right, back on topic. So, um, read the reality of this, uh, or shall I say, the the hard truth about Paul 
is uh, not only is he a shyster, um, but he very much he very much was just he was just tricky altogether. And he whenever was. and any time he felt the need to, he would uh, manipulate stories. He would um, you know. I got do, you do with guile. Smoke, smoke. Yeah, he even conf- he even confessed I got you that. With guile. Yeah. He confessed that. He's bragging about getting people with guile. Right, right. So, uh, so that's kind of that's where we're leading off. And uh, Rabbi, if you want to uh, to chime in on that, that would be good. On which? I don't know anything about uh, different different things of Paul throughout his ministry. Um, different, you know, he's writing to. It seems like in one letter he's writing to Jews, in other ones he's writing to Gentiles. Which I, I, I can, I can concede to that. That's very possible. Which is why he might have different messages. But um, there's times where his messages contradict entirely when it looks like he's talking to the same people. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of not sure how to, how to perceive him altogether. Uh, here it is. Okay. Uh, I'm still trying to fix my color on my Second Corinthians video. twelve sixteen. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Mm, interesting. He admitted that publicly, right? Right. Yeah. Or Philippians chapter 1, verse 18. What then, notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I re- therein re- do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Hmm. So, and that's, that is even disregarding his comment which is quoting people supposedly in a negative light except it reflects his own philosophy for if the truth of god hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory right. why yet am i also judged as a sinner right now even though he's actually quoting somebody who should be uh uh you know uh, uh gotten after for saying this it still is better reflecting of his own philosophy even though he's you know, condemning somebody for having that belief. So, Paul, um, being probably the main author of the entire New Testament, uh, four, four books or not, everything else is right. And so, and all those Give books, or take, all or those written, you know, uh, somewhere around fifteen, twenty-five, thirty-five years after. Uh, after the yep. life of Jesus was over, so Paul, being the author of Christianity, technically, or at least the, the liturgy part of it, liter- you know, the, anything written down, um, yet he's he never met Jesus. We I'm, I'm only say, stating things that most of the people here at the channel already know this, but he never met Jesus. He knew nothing of a virgin birth. So for thirty years of Christianity uh, had passed by, and Paul never knew anything about a virgin no. birth. Right. But when you when you say correctly that he never met Jesus, Christians are going to say, "What about the road? Yeah, uh-huh. on the road." Right. Right. The problem with that is that was a vision. That wasn't the actual, you know. Yeah. Uh, right. Jesus. So. Right. And so all these things, uh, all these things that Paul did, it just seemed like he was like building something. He's trying to build something and support something. I'm more I'm more kind of confused about the the gospels. You know, I mean, I know that they're not written. Matthew didn't write Matthew. Mark didn't like Mark. They're just names attributed, just like one, two, three, four. Um, it's even worse. And it's more like it's more like two, three, one, four, or something like that. Uh, however, that works. Um, yeah, it's even worse. It's, so let's talk. It's about even that. worse because at the very beginning of Luke and the very end of John, each one is making a statement about how everything they're telling you they heard from someone else. Right. Right. I like what Bart Ehrman said. I think it was Bart Ehrman who said this, and I understand that Bart Ehrman's, Ehrman's used to be a, a professor of theology uh, and Christian, and mm-hmm. now he's atheist. But still, he brought up some really great points. He goes, "If if you have you know, uh, if, you know, five hundred witnesses, but nobody witnessed it, but the first guy, then you don't have you only have one witness and four hundred ninety nine other people telling the story." Uh, now that that weren't those weren't the numbers he used, but that was the concept he basically said. Yep. You know, and that's kind of and what he's, it is. Uh, he's, it's, it's a good analogy. It's yeah. a good description too. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. Uh, somebody said Revelation was written forty forty years after Paul died. Uh, wait a minute, I'm bad at math. So thirty three. Si- mm, I thought it was longer than that, but okay. Forty. He, so so Revelation. Dude, um, Jesus is dead at thirty. Even even giving an extra three years through thirty three, okay, uh, and forty years would be seventy three. Seventy three years immediately after, after the, I mean, soon after the destruction of the temple is when Revelation was was written. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure. I 
I'm not sure I would agree with that dating. I thought that was much later than that. Interesting. Could be, yeah. Of course, I haven't reviewed all the dates of the New Testament in a long time, so. Interesting. Yeah. Um, let's see. Good night, Michael. Thank you for thank you for your work, brother, and helping us out with moderating the YouTube channel. So, um, okay. All right. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where we're leading just in the general area of, we don't have to stick on this topic. It was just something to start with. Oh no, it was uh, a good start. Yeah, yeah. And I don't I honestly don't think a lot of people are familiar with the quotation from First Timothy chapter one verse four. Right. Right. You know, I think they they, they gloss over it when they see it. I mean genealogy is massively huge. You know, um, Hey, if and, you're not descended from the right people, you can't be king. If you can't be king, you can't be Messiah. Right, right. Yep, and it's very clear Jesus was not from either tribe. Was, mm. You know, well, you call it that. If, if he oh, was, the, if he was a demigod born of a, you know, of a deity, and halfway impregnated, then that, that honestly, it, it seems like it's kind of like mocking Christianity. And I'm not mocking it, but think about it. Um, in all history, if you have a human mother and then a, you know, no human father, it's called a demigod. That's just what it is. Is a demigod. You know, and so Jesus would be a demigod, basically, like Thor or whoever yeah. else, you know, and some of these others. See, to, which, excuse me, <laughs> uh, but sure. David Katz wrote, Airman said you don't have 500 people saying they saw Jesus. You have one person saying that 500 people saw Jesus. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Thank you very right. much, Mr. Katz. And he also, David also added, Airman also said that he believes Paul couldn't even read Hebrew. That would make sense. Interesting. And here's why. Yeah. There are certain phrases for lack of a better term saying not saying but phrases that are specifically worded in a way to avoid the use of the name of god so for example when it says oh, yeah, right. <clears throat> uh, the right. kingdom of uh, the kingdom of heaven it's not talking about heaven it's talking about god right true okay the kingdom isn't up in heaven it's the kingdom that is owned by heaven there okay right. so when you wind up getting Paul, you wind up getting literally kingdom of heaven instead of the correct, uh, I guess you'd call it translation, which is kingdom of God. Right. They didn't say God, they said heaven, but they meant God. So if you're going to translate properly, you translate to what it means, not what it denotes. You, you translate what it connotes, not what it denotes. Right. Cool. So it should have been, he, the, the, what Paul should have written was, kingdom of god instead he translated it literally because he probably didn't know hebrew right and that's only one example that's cool i'm yeah. I'm, I'm actually so, messing with david. david thank you i'm messing with david katz right now I'll see if he answers his whatsapp <laughs> i'm gonna put him all i need video buddy because i'm fixed to put i'm gonna fix to make you famous <laughs> okay i didn't realize i didn't realize david was that far from, he's not that far no from david me. david is <laughs> close closer to Oh, he is he, oh, he's out of Houston. David, you're out of Houston, not Dallas, right? Out of Woodlands. Yeah, yeah Woodlands. Okay. All right. <laughs> so a lot of people, uh, a lot of Tanakh talkers actually know David Katz. They just don't recognize him, the name necessarily. But he was at the convention in Dallas, I believe. Yep, Dallas. Yes. Uh, with and we also saw Sanders. him via okay. screen last weekend. Yes, yes, yes. Sure did. Sure did. Okay, let's see what happens here. He's going he's to call me back, and I'll put it back up. Um, so, con continuing on, let's see what we got here. All right. Yep, demigod, God, man. That's that's right. That's what Jesus was. Dying, saving, man, God. Yeah. Right. Okay. Hey, Monique. I think you know, Monique. I think she sent me a message. Monique, if you sent me a message and I didn't respond, I apologize. My my boxes get flooded like every day. And I think I, I think I saw a message come in from you, and I just don't know if I got back to it or not. I can't remember. Okay, if you're watching this video right now, uh, just just so you know, all the videos that are that are live, I edit them and 
after we're done. Uh, so they'll be unavailable for a couple of days while I edit them out. Um, so if you guys don't want to watch the edited videos, you want to watch the raw videos without ads and without any editing done to them at all, uh, just join the YouTube channel. I can't join you. You have to join yourself. You have to go to YouTube and pay them. You're not paying me. So don't try to access the membership on YouTube through my PayPal or Patreon because I have no power over that. Go straight to YouTube and when you click the join button, they'll take you through some loops that you've got to follow. Uh, but then you have access to all my teaching videos like like the moment they're free or the mo moment they're available you have full access to everything it's like five bucks a month um if you don't mind waiting wait because the i think the final quality is a better quality anyway so <laughs> that's right Andre andrea said virginity is not a sign that is true a sign is something everyone can see exactly. a sign is is natural and normal a street sign a stop yeah. sign is natural normal metal and paint that's really true that's the that is the best way i think to explain it a street sign. Yeah. And and the sign points to something else. It's right. a sign to something else. So yeah. if he's talking about Imanu Ale, right. the the kid is the sign. <clears throat> yep. Lisa Lisa for Truth says if Jesus was quote unquote son of man, which he's called son of man about eighty times in the New Testament, how could he be born of a virgin <laughs> if he's son of a man? <laughs> right. And and I saw a comment by <clears throat> Miriam, okay, uh where to go? Yeah, interestingly enough, what's the verse? Is it in Psalms where it says, "Do not put your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in Son whom of there Man, is no salvation, in whom there is no trust." Yeah, yeah. In, wait, in whom there is no. I thought it was salvation, but it might be trust. Yeah, so, or, yes, or value or something like that. Yeah, I can't remember, so. but either way, okay. not from a Son of Man, right. and that's a verbatim what the biblical texts read. Right. Son of Man basically means human being. Right. See, this is this is this is why Ben Adam is in my never to be humble opinion should be oh. son of a man right oh yeah right okay, not son of man like it's ooh son of man uh, idol yeah like, right like uh, 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 uh daniel right but son of a man like a human being is a son of a man right so that's true yeah miriam brought that up okay that's cool. um all right meanwhile rika asked a question this is at 827, and William, if you're... I see it now, yep. Okay, because I'm not clear. Okay, is this is Re is it the is same it, to it, say the kingdom in heaven to be the kingdom is heaven? Yeah, but I'm not sure what that means. The kingdom in heaven to the kingdom is heaven. I'm not, I, I don't, is, is it the same as saying the kingdom in heaven is the same as saying kingdom is heaven? Right. Because if that's your question, I, I personally would say no, because the kingdom of God is on here on earth, where okay. everybody obeys God, where God is the ruler. God rules. So God's kingdom is on earth. Maybe that's the whole point she's trying to find out what that, what that means. Okay, you know? all right. God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven is kingdom of God, is what I was trying to say. And that kingdom is on earth where God rules the earth. Okay. Yeah. Guys, if you all are in chat and would like to put your questions in chat, we will try to get them answered. Well, I could phone call too if they want. Yeah. Hi, Shannon. Where's Shannon? She just tuned in? Let's see, 8.30 and I oh, think there it's... Oh, there she is. Hey, 16, Shannon. Yeah, there she is. 16, 4 in the morning? Oh, Rika, Rika said, got it. Thank you. Shannon. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, so I'm just for grins, I will go ahead and open up the phone lines carefully and methodically. <laughs> All right, you know it's really wild too. A lot of you know I'm a I'm an entertainer, and I sing. I sing. I had um, this weekend. I had four four singing gigs, and my throat muscles are so sore right now. Saturday, and I know it's, I'm a, you know Ben Noak, so you don't don't like lose your mess on youtube because I, I was working on saturday um but i had uh, a four hour four hour singing gig at, at a car show and then another three hour singing gig at a new venue all on saturday and then i had one on wednesday and one on thursday Whoa. and it's like and it's like I've, I've never been i've never had my throat muscles sore before but it's like oh it's so wild so <laughs> if i if i seem like i'm kind of quiet maybe it uh yeah so 
uh, or is it at Taking Any Callers? Yes, uh, the way, if you would like to call, the phone lines are open. If you'll put your last four digits in the chat box, that way I know it's you calling. I can even expedite your call above everyone else's. And while we're waiting for a yeah. phone call, Christo, hi, Christo, writes at 821, the Christian New oh. Testament revelation says all liars will burn in the lake of fire. Not all thieves, not all prostitutes, not all adulterers, but all liars. My question, which I've asked, you know, we've talked about before here, and that is, how can anything burn in a lake of fire? Because if the flesh, the flesh and blood goes back to dust, and the only thing that goes to the next life is spiritual, how can something spiritual burn? It's not oh, material. It's not physical. Screen. So this whole lake of fire business, I've never understood as long as I've lived. Even as a kid, oh, lake of fire. Right. Makes it, never made any sense to me. All right. Numbers on your screen. I thought I had it on there earlier. Sorry about that. I've got your last four digits of the way. And we will let this person want to ask a question. Very nice. And Sarah, you can call in too, if you like. Uh, Steve Carter, 1615. Okay. That, that's actually helpful if when you guys do that. If you're calling in, put your last four digits in. That way I can kind of spot you guys easier. Uh, so far, no one's calling. Cool Let's idea. See. Uh, lines, phone lines are open. And I don't have anybody calling in just yet. So um, I'm going to write those two digit things down real fast so that way I can just add your names whenever you do make it through founder of our Haganah class so 5063 there's one right there 1615 okay all right it looks like Steve Carter's on the phone Steve how are you hi gentlemen how are you doing well how are you doing thank god how are you I'm doing pretty good myself. Okay, very I good. admire you guys' work. Thank you. I want to give a shout out to Rabbi Tovia. Tovia is not here tonight. This is actually Rabbi Federo, but we can definitely do that. Yes, still Rabbi Federo too. Oh, I know. No, yeah, I was I giving him a shout out because I wasn't sure. I watch you with him all the time. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I admire you guys' work. Thank you. So, what, what would uh, be your so question tonight, for tonight? I had a question. Right. I'm, I recently converted from Christianity to serve the Most High. Welcome. And uh, a lot of my friends and family, thank you, thank you. A lot of my friends and family are uh, are absolutely obsessed with the writings of Paul. Hey, do and, you, do um, you ever pause one second. I'm gonna, uh, color sit tight. I'll be right back, okay? Okay, let me just get right back to you. Okay, so sorry about that. That was the other color I was expecting. I had to make sure I didn't lose them. Go ahead with your, go ahead and continue on, Steve. Right, a lot of a lot of my family like are really found. I mean, like love the works, and their whole foundation is built on Paul's gospels, Paul's writings, or whatever. And um, I see you guys was talking about the genealogy Paul was hiding. I know Tobia talks a lot about Paul's work, and I'm sure the new rabbi. I haven't followed him yet. I'm sure you guys know a lot more than I do. Like, what what are Paul's like? You know, if you guys can just help me out, like, what's Paul's biggest you know, corruption, you guys would say, in a sense. My answer would be his complete misrepresentation of Jewish law. Yeah. Anti Antinomianism mm -hmm. is the fancy term for hatred of the law, or being against the law. And Paul's writings, mm -hmm. it's like he doesn't understand law, he doesn't understand Jewish law, he doesn't understand how law operates, or its function and purpose. Do you, do you remember the story um, with Absalom and King David's, one of King David's son? Do you remember that story? Sure. Steve? Oh. Vaguely. Okay, so there was a point where uh, he was trying to get himself appointed um, king. And so, Rabbi, correct me if I'm getting my story conflated with something else. Um, so he would actually go and, and make himself a, like at the, at the city gates and he would stand there when people would come and they would greet him and he would, he would like let, praise the people and try to gain their favor. And once they all trusted him, they, he was going to get their vote for putting him, something like that. Mm -hmm. That was right. Yes. Um, and Absalom would. Absalom. Yes. Yeah, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, and so, uh, and and so, I I feel like that's kind of what Paul's doing. Paul's like, you know, trying to do trying to do his thing to get everybody to trust him, and then now that everybody trusts him, he's like telling them all this garbage that's not even true, you know. 
Um, that may not be a, a good connection point, but I do know that he is not a, a good representation of the law, even though in certain letters in the New Testament he does teach and, the and law. But he doesn't The purpose and function of the law is to teach us we cannot yeah. keep the law. The purpose and function of the law is to be a school teacher, and we don't need a school teacher anymore. He, it's like he doesn't even understand how law operates, much less Jewish law or yeah. biblical mm. law or God's law. Right. Very true. So why, why I do see we this, know? but a lot of people tell me. Sorry. No, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead I was saying, like, the majority of the people tell me, like, Paul preached the law and told people to follow the law, but then in. I see in one hand he's saying like the law is a curse and it brought debt or whatnot. Now there exactly. there is a proper there is what I would call a proper understanding of uh, the law is a curse. He was talking about the punishment of the law was curse, which is death. Death is a curse. That's that's really, and that does make sense to me as an ex messianic. I do get that. Um, I see as an ex messianic myself. Uh, I see Paul taught more to keep the law than he did slip up and let telling people to violate it. Like you know, Romans two thirteen is a good example. You know, I don't I don't remember what it says. It's just a, a verse I had committed to memory. In fact, let me look it up real fast. Romans two thirteen says Acts Romans two. What does it say? Come on, get there. Thirteen. Oh yeah, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Paul said that in Romans. But then he says you cannot you know, do the law. Not, not in this sentence. Paul not, not in this know, par Not in this context. Says you right. You cannot even do the law. Right. So God gives you laws to do that you cannot perform. So you'll be found guilty for disobeying the law, and then you realize that you need Jesus. But my point is, Paul taught to keep the law throughout the New Testament more than he taught to violate. Like he talks about keeping the feasts, for example. We, we will disagree you know? with that. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. I think the I think the comprehension I'm of this saying in general I I don't think it's properly you know the proper at all that you teach the law on one hand and even yeah. have this type of uh, you know being accused sure. for even teaching against it at all you know right yeah agreed agreed that that should stick out to a lot of people on its own but unfortunately people are obsessed with his writings right well he makes up most of the New Testament most of the verses so in the New it, Testament are found in the in Paul not in the in the Gospels or Revelation. Yeah, right, right. Cool, man. Well, appreciate your call. Thank you for calling you guys in. Bringing me up. Thank you. You, you bet. Thank Thanks you. for the call. Uh, yeah. Sure. Okay. Right Let's, you get. All right. Next caller, 5063. The way you are alive. Hi. Um, I actually was calling to see if y'all could explain a little more about where the Noahide faith comes from. Taking into account Exodus chapter 12. 48 and 49, which states that any non-children of Israel could become a Jew if they would become circumcised and come under the law, and that there would be one law for the citizen and the stranger. Okay, so that's your, your, that's your question incomplete? I mean, completely? Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, if you want to yeah. hang up now, I'm going to answer. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, Rabbi, take off with I've got uh, a handful well, of thoughts. First, let that, me, oh, yes, sir. First, first, let me, you know, uh, give a caveat, and that is, B'nai Noach is not my field. Okay, on the other hand, uh, can you make it easy on me and give me the uh, passage? He's, not, he's not on the phone with us now. Uh, okay. he, well, but he is in chat, Exodus though. 28. Uh, yeah, uh, go ahead and t put that specific verse reference in chat, if you don't mind, and I'll pull it up, pull it up on screen. Um, I will say this. I'll say the like the content like um, there's there's no uh, there's no rulings or no things in per se in Torah that specifically uh, classify Noahide laws or call it by name. Um, but the concept has always been there. It's kind of like kind of like well, the, there are specific verses in nine in Genesis nine. Okay. That when you read them and you ask questions about them, you kind of conclude. The, the the Noahide laws. Okay. So if, if uh, oh, I'll have to go look, but it, it, ah, come on. Oh, Jesus. While you look that up, let me finish right. my thought, Rabbi. Yes. Let me finish my thought while you finish while you look that go up. Ahead, go ahead. Um, so there is, um, you know, in in the English. Oh, see, you kind of you threw me off whenever you did that. I'm um, sorry. That's okay. Sorry. Um, I know in the English language there's. Uh, um, there's a, a a symbol. When I was when I was in school, you know, they put, when when you had the vowel systems that have the I A E I O U, 
and you knew whether to pronounce the A as an A because it had a straight line over it. Right. And you knew how to say A as an A if it had a, like a U over the top mm-hmm. of it for right. short, long and short. Well, now they have an upside down E, which is called a schwa, right? Right. That Comes didn't, directly that, from the Hebrew that word. That didn't exist when I was in school. The concept did, but the, the thing didn't. The Hebrew, I mean, the, the um, Noahide law concept has always been there, but it really was never pointed out until now. It's kind of like the vowel system uh, with the Hebrew. You know, there was no written vowel system. That was something that came, you know, because of the Mesoretic text, which is handed down. You know, those rules were there, but they finally illustrated those rules using visual uh, visual things that you can connect with it. So uh, just because they came later doesn't mean that they were invented. It's always been there. Uh, so the concept of the Noahide laws has always been there, and the Noahide has always been well, there. It's just now that now there's finally a need to exp- to figure it out. That's why you're but, starting but to get all these... Not- it's not that hard to see in the in the verses of Genesis nine. Okay, let's go ahead and go over that. I'm not uh, like I said. It's not my field, but I will remind you that if you go to, uh, you're, you're gonna have to help me with this. Okay. Okay. Uh, Genesis nine three. Okay. Can you pull that up? Yeah, uh, be easier. I'll put it in later. Uh, it says, "Every moving thing that lives shall be yours to eat, like the green right. vegetation." I have green given herb you everything. Herb I've given you all things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if the every moving thing that lives is meat, yeah. Okay, then you can't have. Uh, 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 then you can't cut the limb off. Of, cut, blah, 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 cut the limb off the living animal. Sure. It's the whole moving thing, okay? Uh, let's see. Um, I want to. I want to add a uh, another. Thou shalt not murder is Genesis nine six. Whosoever sheds man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Okay. Um, uh, be fruitful, let's multiply. See. Nine seven. Uh, let's um, see. Okay, so uh, I'm going to comment on nine three real fast, and this is. Anytime I have ideas that, that that trickle down from the messianic movement, this is part of it. Um, their teaching says you that you know you can't. No one should be eating anything um, unclean because the the, ver- the part of the verse that actually would point to that would be just as the vegetation. I have given you everything to eat. Well, th- even back then they knew they couldn't eat poison ivy, so that was obvious to them. So likewise, there was obvious animals that they didn't want to eat. The ones that were swimming in, you know, poop and mud. That was to them. That was supposedly obvious. That was also like things you wouldn't want to eat. So there's that. Uh, do I buy that? Maybe. Maybe not. Either way. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So let's go to All the right. verses. Let's go to the verses he pointed out and read those. I told him I would actually pull those. That's uh, Exodus 12, 48, and 49. So let me pull that up real fast. Well, if I can get to it, come on. Exodus 12, 48, and 49. All right, I'm going down to it now. All right, so. Uh, and you should. Let me see. And should a proselyte. Should a proselyte reside with you? He shall. Okay, this is a different. This, see, this is, a, this is different, though. Uh, this is talking about what would be called a, a ger toshav, or, or someone who is not Jewish, who is actually dwelling in the home of another Jewish person. Oh, yes, that was another point yeah. that he made in yeah. his question, yeah. and we do have to talk about that. Yeah, it, This does not say that every single person on planet Earth is right. under these right. laws. What it says is, is that if a non-Jew comes under the protection of the Jewish people by living among them right. in Israel then they get the protection of the same laws. It's no different than if uh, somebody comes across the border and right. lives in the United States, they get the protection of the United States Constitution. Right. And that's federal law. Right. And exact, it's, it's talking about exactly the same thing. It doesn't mean everybody's permitted to go pretend you're Jewish and do all the Judaism things. Right. What it means is, is that while you are living among the Jewish people in the land of Israel, you are provided with the protection of the same law. It does not mean you're required to keep the law when you go back to 
Europe or wherever. So I would like to, uh, there was a comment that he, uh, he made in chat. Um, it says uh, he was referring to those verses specifically we talked about. And it says very clear there's one law. So my comment to that, that specifically states is there is one law. You have to understand that the one law is the Torah. It's not a specific law within the Torah. It's the one law. It's for, right. it's for it's okay. A, so as a unit. So my question to uh, the way, I think it was, uh, I can't remember. Yeah, the way. Um, my question to you would be, um, can you as a man, can you keep the laws of Nida, um, which is the purity laws for woman? And your answer has to be no. Well, why? Because you're not a woman, right? Um, can you keep the laws of the priesthood? No. That's the one law. That's all within the one law. There's laws for the children. There's laws for parents. There's laws for people who live in the land. There's laws for so many different categories. And you are in that one law. The Noahide laws are also in that one law. So there is still one law for the Jew and for the woman. There's that one law for the Jew and the child. There's that one law for the Jew and for the priest, right? There's that one law for the Jew and the Noahide also. That's, that's the simplest way to look at it. It really is. Well, and Christo at 849 quotes, if a stranger who dwells with you, that's the key part. Yeah, that's he the point, said, yeah. And he says that not everybody lives in Israel with right. Jews, but if a stranger who dwells with you, exactly. then, you then he gets the protection of the same laws. But if he's right. not living uh. there anymore, he's, he's done. Right. It's over. And people kind of forget that. They, they want to forget the who mm-hmm. lives with you part and only remember the stranger part. Sure. Yep. So narrowing that down uh, for the way, that's, that's the point. It literally says in the verses you mentioned, it literally says that live, um, that live with you. They actually reside with you. And so, like me, I don't reside with them. I'm, I'm in Texas, not in Israel. You know what I mean? And, even if I, and if I was in a Jewish community... For example, and I was living, if I was, you know, let's say I went in and I was a foreign exchange student or something, let's say they brought me in and at that point in time, that would, that would be me. I'm living with them. I'm living amongst them. So I would be expected to keep those actually. And they would be expected to have me follow those. So, Right. By the way, okay. The gentleman person who calls himself the way. Yep. Could you read the verses from your translation? It could be a difference between translations. Which verses... That that's already you know five minutes ago. I don't know which verses he's referring the to. The same ones, Exodus, uh, and then the verses uh, was ex- Exodus twelve, forty eight and forty nine. Um, and so the thing about it is the translation. The, the only the only language to read it in properly is Hebrew, um, and so the, the one that I've just read from. Uh, is an actual translation from directly from the Hebrew, not a Christian translation. It says, "And should a proselyte reside with you, live mm-hmm. with you?" It literally says that. Hebrew word is toshav, I think, or uh, toshev, or something. Well, like that. Uh, it's actually the word ger. Ger is the one, ger is one the law person. shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourns among you. So, where's the sojourn word at then? Let's see. Let's see. Well, let me, yeah. let me look at the Hebrew. Give me right. Hold on. Right, let's, uh, let's see. Yeah, come on. Let's, I'm looking at it as well. Let's see. The Ezrach Ulager Hagor Tochachem. Okay. Okay. So Torah Achat, one Torah. Right. He had the Ezrach to a citizen Ulager to the stranger, which is also translated as convert. Okay. Hager uh, who dwells Betochachem uh, among you. Betoch. Yeah. What? Right. So. The, so there you the, go. Uh, I think yeah. I think it's important because there's a lot of people, a lot of Christians who view new, new viewers who think that there's nothing but translations out there, and that's true because Hebrew is the original language. But they don't. Uh, some don't even realize that Hebrew isn't a translation. It's actually that's the original. That's the native tongue. That's the native language. Um, I actually had a minister. Wait, are you trying to tell me that Moses didn't speak King James English? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> that's great. Hmm. There you go. Uh, people who believe that right let's see uh how you hebrew, hebrew, if you want to learn how to read hebrew go to hebrewjumpstart.com oh yeah right speaking of that <laughs> hebrew jumpstart.com hebrew jumpstart. uh apparently is one of the best teaching videos out there from what I think this so. is whatever well i think so too but i'm i'm telling you comments in the comments section on the video 
Uh, there's three quarters of a million views on this thing, and it's by yours truly, Rabbi Stuart Federo, sitting in front of you here. A video yeah. that I, I edited to make it look pretty. All the More animations. You edited. You made it into a animation. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, and there's a link there when you go. There's links that to, to get the workbooks and everything. So y'all follow those links. Very important. Very very classy. You got to be if you want to be in the cool the the what is it too cool for school? Get the workbook. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So oh the, so David David Cash just just commented in WhatsApp. He said be sure to let them know about his son doing great in Hebrew school because of the rabbi's oh. course. Thank you, David. Yeah. Very nice. Yes, Crystal just put that uh, that video link right there. Click on that link. Uh, that's the actual website, and you go to the website. You can donate there to Rabbi Oskowski because he's he's retired now. It's kind of yes. an, it's not kind of it's it's totally an unpaid retirement. So whatever you guys do there will help him keep buying bread and butter for moving forward. <laughs> so yes. there we go. Okay, I'm working on learning Hebrew. Oh, cool. So the way the guys I've, we've been talking with, uh, he says, I've actually watched your lessons <laughs> on it, and I'm working on well, learning like, Hebrew. That's, Rabbi, that's Rabbi, funny. Rabbi, Rabbi, I'm Rabbi, Rabbi. <laughs> uh, the way he's the one that made the call, and we've been talking about we've been talking about his verse earlier. He says, I've actually watched your lessons on it, and I'm working on learning Hebrew. Uh, thank you for making those. You really made it accessible. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Very I appreciate good. that. Awesome. Okay. Now you can continue, Rabbi. <laughs> uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, oh, man. Right. No. Oh. You know, uh, you know, I've heard alcohol like helps like when you if, if you cut yourself or something. You think a glass of alcohol would help my back pain? <laughs> uh, well, actually, seriously, man. you know, yeah. a nice shot actually could probably help, but I'm telling you, Volterran is amazing. I'm, I'm look. I'm gonna look into that for sure. In fact, I've already. I've got to post it right in the middle of my computer screen right here. Oh, you know what I did? I, I didn't want to get rings during my call, so I mar I took turn the phone line off. Let me turn it back on. <laughs> I didn't know I could do that. You know, years ago, it's like when we would be uh, a caller would be asking you or Rabbi Singer a question, and the phone would ring during the conversation. I'm like, how do I stop that? But I can't turn it off. And I realized I can turn it off just by simply toggling off. Uh, turning the phone lines completely off. I thought that if I did that, I would lose my callers, but I don't. So I turned it off. It's back on now. So if you guys want to call in, call in. All right, we got a caller. Let's see what we got here. Right? Ready? Yeah. All right. Caller, welcome to the show. Please tell us your name. Where are you calling from? Hi, I'm Lisa from Oregon. Yes, um, I've actually got two questions. Give me one second. Give me one second. I want because I want to write them down. Usually we'll start answering one and then we'll forget what the second one was. Forget what the other. So if you would it, very succinctly tell me what both of them you, are. You just basically. said that to be nice, so I wouldn't feel so bad. No, because that happens with me and Rabbi well, Singer a lot. The first one, the first one can be answered fairly quickly. Okay. Is there an online Tanakh in English? Yes. Uh, yes. My, my favorite one that I Two like. The, the my not, there's. Two of my favorite ones. I'll see if I can put up. Uh, I'll put a link up. Um, there is uh, Safaria.org has an amazing one with all the with all the connections. It's so universal. You can click on words and it'll tell you what the root words are. Uh, Chabad.org, C H A B A D, uh, has also an online Tanakh as well, which is absolutely just delightful. Um, they they all have variances, but their variances based on their own base language they and they all understand how they came to that but anyway long story short that's a short simple answer for you what was the other okay, one besides Chabad? safaria they actually oh, sure. yeah of course safaria it's amazing lisa yeah. go ahead with your actually let me write you you're, you're the 0283 number right okay my second question is um maybe rabbi Federo has gotten an answer to this because i haven't how do Christians um, explain their belief that uh, Jesus died as an atonement for their sins when, I think it's in Exodus, it clearly states that the goat, I think it was, yeah. that the, the priest the scapegoat. put the sins of Israel yeah. on. Yeah. Got sent out. I <laughs> didn't get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we we'll sent out to the desert. <laughs> that's that's great. You're only like the third person. That was my first. Lisa, this is cool because that was my very first major conflict that I had while I was still a messianic. 
because they um what's really wild is even back then um I, you know, during this, in the stories of the holy, of all the holidays, and they kind of like tell them in, in a storyline. And so it seems like uh, I got them conflated, like Passover got conflated with Yom Kippur, which is what you're talking about now. The goat that got set free was not Passover, it was actually on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. And so I was conflating those. A lot of people do because they don't read everything in context. And so uh, I just think that's interesting that you, you coming up with the, uh, the same problem I had when I began this journey uh, 13 years ago. So, Bless you. Um, we'll go ahead and take your question now. If you want to go ahead and hang up now and tune in for your answer, okay? All right. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. And Phoenix, hold on one second. Phoenix, sit tight. We'll be back. With, uh, you're the next caller. We're going to discuss this topic real fast, and we'll get right with you, okay? Thanks. Okay. Don't hang up. All right. All right. The, okay. <laughs> you know, there's a, dump, a bunch of different ways to go about this. Oh, he's on the phone. Okay. Sorry. Uh all right, so your question is, if let's back up a step. The specific ceremony as described in the Torah about Yom Kippur regarding sin of the people is that the high priest lays the sins on the goat, and then the goat is led into the wilderness to take the sins away from the people. The goat is not killed. And so why do they think Jesus has to die? Okay, there's a lot of different ways to answer that. First now, of all... Now, we don't want to bring in the oral law. We want to leave that alone. Just no, it's use... easy to, it's, no, no, it's easy to bring that in. No, there's but no the, problem the, with the, that. the point is uh, Christians won't, won't go there anyway unless they finally get to this point and need to defend it. My problem is but, uh, they, don't, they don't need to know that but the, point but, because... But the ceremony's over. Okay. Yeah. What what the what the Torah demands? Okay. Ends with taking the animal to the wilderness. Yes, period. that's what, that's what I'm talking about. The oral law uh -oh, expresses okay. further, sorry, and, and that's not necessary. Thing, okay. Good. 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 Okay. Because that's where this that's where the ceremony ends. Right. What the, what God through the Torah demands of the people is simply and only to take the goat away. Yep. That's right. Not to kill that's it. it. Or, yeah. No. That's it. Right. Right. That's right. the end of it. What, pe what superstitious people do later is up to them. But the ritual, the ceremony, what's demanded by God is done right. when they take the goat away. Okay. Yep. So that proves that you don't need a blood sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin. Yeah. That proves that you don't need Jesus to die for your sin. You also have Deuteronomy 24:16, Ish bechet o yumatu, every man will be put to death for his own sin. So no one else can die for your sin. Or you've got Exodus 32, 32, 30, I always get that mixed up, 32, where Mo, the people of Israel do the sin of the golden calf. Moses doesn't know what to do. He says, maybe I can be put to death for your sin. Maybe I can be punished for your sin. He goes to God and he says, forgive them, but if you don't forgive them, punish me for their sin. And God says, sorry, that's not how it works. The person who commits the sin is the person who gets the punishment for that sin. And then you've got uh, 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 Ezekiel 18. Okay? The whole thing about Ezekiel 18 is no one else can die for your sin. Okay? The parents don't get put to death for the sins of the kids. The kids don't get put to death for the sins of the parents. Each person is put to death for his own sin. The wickedness of the wicked is on the wicked, not on the righteous. So... You're right, Lisa. You're right. There, there are no less than three places where it makes it explicitly clear: no one else can die for your sin. Jesus can't die for your sin. And the idea of a human sacrifice and a human uh, to be to, to be the blood sacrifice is antithetical to Deuteronomy uh, thirteen, twelve or thirteen, where God condemns human sacrifice as an abomination and something God hates. Right. Okay. So, I can only agree with you. There, there's no way that that they should be able to, you know, ignore right. what it says that you yourself pointed out with the Yom Kippur sacrifice of the goat. Yeah. Okay. And and, and, and the, the other quotations, which you know we also discussed just now. Right. And someone asked in chat what verse that was. Leviticus sixteen twenty one. So let me just read that real fast. Oh. Okay. Uh, by Sixteen and verse twenty-one says, 
There he is. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the sins of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send the goat away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. That's it. Done. And a ritual. Done. Done, done, done. That's it. That's and, then, it and then verse 22. And the goat shall bear upon himself all their iniquities yeah. unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. Yeah, right. The end. End of cer ceremony. Yep. Yeah. That's great. I love it. Okay, let's go ahead and do, we've got one more caller. I want to try to fit this one in before we get out of here. This okay. one. Okay, Phoenix, you are live. Go ahead with your question. Shalom, Rabbi. This is Phoenix in South Dakota. I thought that was you. I heard your name. I thought, I wonder if that's the Phoenix I know. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, hi. You were talking. Hi. It's nice to talk to you finally. Good to talk to you, um, too. You were talking earlier about uh, Paul and a lot of his uh, shenanigans. Yep. One of the things that he always said was, uh, and he said it in at least two places, maybe three, uh, is that the Nazarene was the first fruit of the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep because he was the first one resurrected from the dead. Well, setting aside the fact that he had raised Lazarus supposedly, and the fact that Elijah and El Elisha exactly. raised people from the dead in the Old Testament <laughs> or in in what yep, the church refers right. to as the Old Testament, um, he was not the first fruits because Matthew says in his crucifixion account that when the Nazarene died, that the graves opened and people came back to life. Right. Um, now, this is, this is a question that I've had, and my question actually doesn't have to do with Paul, it has to do with Matthew's account. Um, okay. And this was something no one has ever been able, nobody in, in my church days could ever answer this for me, and I don't know that there is an answer, but this is something I have always wondered. Matthew, According to Matthew, the people came back to life when the Nazarene died. But it says they didn't appear to anybody until after his resurrection three days later. So my question is, what were they doing for those three days while they were sitting around waiting for the resurrection to happen so that they could, I mean, were, were, they, were they drawing maps and divvying up who was going to go to which houses? Or were they just sitting around the cemetery telling knock-knock jokes? I mean, you know, what's going on <laughs> no, for those three no, days? they were right? wandering around like zombies. It was the first they, zombie they zombies apocalypse. zombies walking around. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I've always wondered that because, yeah. you know, that's one of many discrepancies that, you know, supposedly the Nazarene was the first fruits, but he wasn't the first one, yeah. even in nope. the church table. And, and yet, you know, what, and, but also... And there's another <laughs> issue here that they also kind of gloss over. Don't you think somebody would have said something? Hey, did you see those zombies walking around? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, don't you think somebody would have, you know, put it in a history book somewhere? That was my that was my main main concern was something so amazing that never the only place you can find the account of it is in their own New Testament. No one else talked about it. No historian or, or anywhere. The Rip Veil. Where's the Rip Veil? Nobody else talked about it. Right, right. Yeah, of course not. Because they made it up. Yeah, interesting. Phoenix, thank Real you so much for your call. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Hey, it was good Bye -bye. talking with you. You too. Stay Shalom, Rabbi. Blessings to you and your family. Well, thank you. You too, and stay in touch. Awesome. Cool. That was our last question. All right. Good deal. You, do you want to? Uh, um, hey, William. How's this? <laughs> you look. You look like something I would imagine back then. Except I wouldn't. I don't imagine him smiling because I don't know if they know what happened. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, Lazarus too would have been among the first fruits, wouldn't he have been? Lazarus. They raised from the dead um, after three days, or they got stinky. The tomb was all smelly. Whatever it was. Remember. And she also brought out Elijah and Elisha. Yeah, uh, yeah. So interesting, good stuff. Either they didn't remember, or they didn't know what was in the Hebrew scriptures. Yeah, right. Okay, so guys, thank you again for tuning in. And remember, if you guys don't want to wait for the edited version of these videos, just join the YouTube channel for five dollars a month. You can't join through me. You have to go through YouTube directly. Uh, and you have all, all immediate access to everything. You don't have to wait for anything. So, uh, and if, yep, there you go. So that's the best way of saying it. And members have special quirks too that happen every once in a while. So you might want to check that out. Um, Rabbi, 
you should have a wonderful night, and you all oh, should as you well. Too. And we'll always s- always fun. We'll see you hopefully uh, Shimuling same time, same place next week. Yep. Unless we have something before yep. then, which I believe we do. Stay tuned. Follow me on Facebook. You'll find all the updates. Take care, everybody. Shalom. Hello, my dear friends. Hope this message finds you well. If you like the way this channel is going and the channel has been a blessing to you, please consider supporting the channel by going to the website, tanaktalk.com, T-A-N-A-C-H-T-A-L-K.com. Thank you once again for your time and for supporting Tanak Talk. Shalom. Shaifa